Hello and welcome to the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association's 2020 Virtual History Conference. Thank you to all of you for supporting ECS far-reaching work and in keeping the important history of the Eastern Sierra celebrated and relevant. We have a great program planned for you as we take a look at some of the great places you can visit to take in a little of the deep and rich history of this fabled land. We are so fortunate here in the Eastern Sierra to have these remarkable institutions that serve not only as repositories for old photographs, relics, and artifacts, but also to interpret, inform, propagate, and engage us in our pursuit of understanding and appreciating the past. There are no fewer than nine different museums, cultural centers, and historical societies in Inyo and Mono County. A truly remarkable number when considering the total population of the two counties is fewer than 35,000 people. Collectively, hundreds of volunteers provide tens of thousands of hours to help ensure the safeguarders of yesteryear continue to operate and be there for visitors, locals, scholars, and researchers to enjoy. And an even greater number of folks give of their pocketbooks and treasures to help keep these valuable gems sparkling. So with that, let's get started with our program. Welcome to Manzanar National Historic Site. My name is Elisa Lynch, and it's our honor to share some of the sites um, that were captured back in 1943 and 1944 by the famous photographer Ansel Adams. I'm standing near the sentry posts um, here at the uh, historic entrance sign. The posts are original, the rock garden, uh, is original and the sign is a reproduction. The photograph that Ansel Adams took of this camp entrance uh, is probably one of the most famous of man's I'm standing at the sentry post at Manzanar, uh, which is usually referred to as the historic entrance. And it is a historic entrance to the camp, but for most of the people who were here, it was their historic exit. When people first came to the camp, they entered uh, at an area that would be just south of the parking lot today at the visitor center. So these sentry posts were built in the fall of 1942 by a guy named Riozo Cado. And as we go around the site today, we're gonna to see some of Cado's other works, including a bench uh, that was in front of the hospital and it is in one of Ansel Adams' photographs as well as the cemetery monument, which is another iconic visual of Manzanar that was also captured by Ansel Adams. These two sentry posts, the first one was for the US Army, the military police. Uh, they checked whoever went in and out of the camp. They had uh, approximately around 130 soldiers here, um, at different companies at different times, and they staffed the, century, the first sentry post. The second one was for what was known as the internal police or internal security. Those were Japanese Americans and they uh, were responsible for law enforcement inside of the camp. During World War II, Manzanar was the largest city between Los Angeles and Reno with a population of more than 10,000 people. Uh, and it had many elements of a city. Uh, you know, it had schools, hospital, fire department, police department, utility crews, but it had two things that made it, or two primary things that made it very unlike any other city. And that is that the camp was surrounded by security features, including a five strand barbed wire fence and eight guard towers. The guard towers were located at each of the corners of the main housing area and at the midpoints and Ansel Adams did not take a picture uh, of any of the towers, but very interestingly, he took a photograph from the top of tower number eight. And you can see in that photograph, you're looking down over the baseball field, over rows and rows of barracks in blocks. Uh, and you can of course see the mountains that are the permanent feature of Manzanar. In correspondence in the fall of 1943 with Manzanar's project director, Ralph Merritt, Ansel Adams explained his goals. And he said several times 
that his, he really wanted to show the humanity of people and especially to focus on the rights of citizens and to feature American citizens. Uh, in the camp, there were about just roughly one third of people who had been born in Japan and were not citizens. Um, and about two thirds were US citizens by birth. Um, the government referred to them as citizens and non-citizens alike uh, who had to come into these camps. I think he enjoyed doing it. He, like I said, he spent four trips here and I went two with him, two of them with him. My mom, my sister went on one, I can remember, and my mom went at least on one that I remember. And uh, I do remember the camp, but not well. And I didn't, I met a few of the people, but not intimately, not really socializing with them. I met some of the kids, they were like me going to school, you know. Uh, but it was difficult conditions here. I mean, they were mess halls, I guess. They weren't eating in their own kitchens, you know, in their own homes. And I do remember the guards. I remember the towers. And I remember uh, soldiers with bayonets. And it was, you know, it was a, it was war. I mean, it was something was going on, obviously. But I wasn't afraid. I mean, there was no fear of being here. Bobby Miyataki remembers Ansel Adams coming to his apartment in Block 20. His father, Toyo Miyataki, was also a very renowned photographer in his own right. And so when Ansel came to Manzanar, he visited the Miyataki family. And this is what Bobby Miyataki remembers of that. The only thing that sticks out in my mind is that he played this little toy piano with all ten fingers. Minnie had this little red toy piano and keyboards only about like this. Like a foot long, maybe? Yeah, I don't know how many keys there were, but he, he was... Uh, accomplished uh, concert pianist I heard and so he, he was playing I don't know what piece he was playing but whenever he ran out of the keyboard he would ad lib it with his mouth <laughs> but he was playing all th he was playing with all ten fingers you know or whatever <laughs> that's that's the one thing I remember about Ansel Adams I don't even remember taking the pictures you know that I had to sit there as you as you probably knows, I'm not in one of the pictures. Where was I? I don't know. <laughs> I was out, probably out playing ball. Ansel Adams wanted to record everyday life in the camp. And he did that by visiting multiple families. He visited the Miyataki family, which Bobby Miyataki talked about. Uh, he also spent a good bit of time with the Nakamura family. Mrs. Nakamura was a PE teacher. Uh, she was here with her two young daughters. And Ansel Adams actually photographed them, not only in front of their barracks, but in multiple places throughout the site, including Merritt Park and the Block 12 Garden. And Joyce has some incredible memories of the time she spent with him. I just remember that he was a, a, a man in a, you know, in a hat and he had this camera, um, <clears throat> and um, he wanted his poses <laughs> without any question, because <laughs> I, I remember complaining to him about that one picture. The sun's in my eye, and he didn't, he didn't pay any attention. He just let me sit there, and, and then finally, he, you know, I don't know, he, he must have taken a lot of different poses, I mean pictures, but the, that one photograph he took, he must have really liked it because he used that same picture in a textbook that he wrote a chapter for on um, developing, developing negatives or something. So he was really uh, uh, concerned about how you develop a negative. And, uh, yeah, um, but it was fortunate for us because, because of that experience, you know, even afterward, uh, many years down the road, when our photographs were used in 
art, for exhibitions all over. You know, it just made life more pleasant. You know, in remembering the days of Manzanar, our pictures were taken by Ansel Adams, and he was so famous. You know, and not very many people have that to look back on. I'm standing at the site of Manzanar's permanent, permanent hospital that opened in August 1942. It was actually the third hospital that was in the camp. The first one was a barracks with no running water. The second one was a slightly improved barracks. And then the army built a hospital here in 1942. And you can see in an Ansel Adams photo that there's are, are people sitting outside here on this bench. You can see how much dirt has covered the ground since then. Uh, and even though the buildings are gone, many of the, the stone features and some of the trees remain. One of the most famous photographs that Ansel Adams took of Manzanar was here at Merritt Park. This was considered the community park of Manzanar. It was the largest uh, and people from all over the camp would come here at various times, uh, often to take photographs. There is a photo of the Nakamura family walking out of a small gazebo that was over in that location, where you can see the cement foundation today. Merrick Park after the war uh, basically was buried over the course of years, um, and it wasn't excavated until 2008. We didn't know if there'd even be anything here. Um, there were rocks above the surface, but we had no idea what remained below the surface. Uh, the Turtle Rock was still here. All of these rocks, the bridge is a reconstruction, but basically the garden is as it was when it was photographed. Uh, and it's one of the wonderful things about Ansel Adams' photographs is they provide clues to what was there historically as we do archaeology today to find those same features. I'm at the site of Manzanar's Children's Village Orphanage. And of all the stories of Manzanar, this orphanage is probably one of the most surprising to many and most emotional. Uh, it was home to over 100 kids during the course of the war who ranged in age from newborns to 19 years old. There were also children here who were hapa, which means half. As there were children who were half uh, Alaska Native that were here. There were children um, who uh, have Caucasian. And so these children, some of them were orphaned because of the war, but some of them were orphans before the war. And those who were pre-war orphans were brought here from three homes. The Salvation Army Children's Home in San Francisco, uh, from the Mary Knoll Orphanage in Los Angeles, and from another orphanage in Los Angeles called Xionian. And the leaders of Shonian, uh, Harry and Lillian Matsumoto, actually were the superintendent and assistant superintendent of the Manzanar Children's Village. Ansel Adams took a wonderful photo of Harry Matsumoto sitting on these steps with some of the children. Uh, he also captured uh, the picture of babies in cribs who were here. For 150 of more than 11,000 people who were incarcerated in Manzanar, this was the end of their lives. This is the Manzanar Cemetery with its very iconic monument, which Ansel Adams photographed uh, in the, with Mount Williamson in the background. Uh, the monument was built in 1943. The front of it says, I Re I To, which is Soul Consoling Tower a monument to console the souls of the dead. On the back side, it says, erected by Manzanar Japanese, August 1943. Of all the people who passed away in Manzanar, the majority were cremated, and their ashes either held in the Buddhist church or at the hospital. But there were at least 15 people buried here, and six of the bodies still remain. You can tell the graves that have bodies in them because they have a mound of dirt on top. 
If you see a rock alignment that doesn't have dirt, that could be a former grave or potentially a, a ring of rocks that was around a tree. This site is not only famous for being the camp cemetery, it's also been for more than 50 years the site of the annual Manzanar pilgrimage, which takes place every year on the last Saturday of April. And that uh, effort has brought attention to Manzanar and to the other camps and increased people's realization of why these stories need to be preserved and shared. An important part of the pilgrimage is an interfaith service that takes place here at the cemetery monument, where you have Buddhists, Protestants, Catholics, often Muslims, who come to pray, not just for the dead, but for all of us today. People in Manzanar were really touched by Ansel Adams' work, not just as he was taking the photographs, but in seeing the photos in an exhibit he did here, uh, and also people outside of camp who saw the book. One of those people was a woman named Sue Kunatomi. Uh, she would go on to become Sue Kunatomi Embry and spend the last 37 years of her life fighting to preserve Manzanar, organizing the annual pilgrimages. On April 14, 1945, Sue wrote in her column, Purely Personal, uh, which she wrote in Chicago and it was published in the Manzanar Free Press. Um, an excerpt that I think really shows that Ansel Adams accomplished his goal of showing humanity. She wrote, There are laughing faces, solemn faces, faces of the young and old. Which one hides a breaking heart? How many of them know the joy of being a free person? Not freedom from a wire enclosure, but freedom of their soul. Behind these personalities, there lie the courage and faith of a minority. It happened, and you live with what happened, and he wanted, I think, to make sure that what he was gonna do was sort of show how these people, un unfairly as it was, they functioned, they tolerated it, they survived, they lived with this thing that they had to. They were forced into this. And I, I think that he was very sympathetic to what, you, know, and you can read his writing in Born Free and Equal, and I think he's, you know, he was quite insistent, you know, on that. He wasn't a portrait photographer, yet we have some unbelievably wonderful portraits that he did. And I think he was looking at this as a documentary sort of thing that required him to do, in effect, portraits. And I think that he geared them to how they were in the environment. They're not staged portraits. They're working how they were in the environment, how they, how they were living or how they were uh, in their workplace, where we could, but they weren't staged portraits. That's, uh, I, for the most part. One of the things about Ansel Adams' photographs is that he captures a place in time and people in time. Of course, many of the people he photographed are either quite elder or maybe not with us anymore. But his photographs still convey their lives here and their experiences and their stories. Here on the landscape at Manzanar, you can also see part of what he photographed, uh, especially in the gardens and in the features that remain of the places that he took photos. And then besides the landscape itself, we have oral histories of people who were in Manzanar, almost 650 of them now. And we really appreciate ECIA's efforts uh, to help us get equipment and grants to support that program. So many of the stories that I've shared today um, come in part through the work that your support of Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association is helping to make possible at Manzanar. And we thank you. 
Okay, that concludes this portion of our Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association's 2020 Virtual History Conference. We hope you have enjoyed this program as much as we had putting it all together. Before we leave, as an avid fan of Eastern Sierra history myself, I would like to express my own personal gratitude and appreciation to ESIA for putting together what is now five Eastern Sierra History Conferences and for all their efforts that they put forth towards educating and inspiring visitors and locals alike about Sierra Nevada public lands through their many interpretive blue ribbon programs, exhibits, and projects. You too can support this truly incredible organization by going to sierraforever.org and clicking on the join or give tab at the top right hand side. Thank you again for joining us for this virtual history conference. If you've enjoyed it even half as much as I have, I think we have a winner. So with that, until our paths cross again, this is David Woodruff, hoping you always enjoy the tales of history that you create from your own journeys here in the Eastern Sierras. <laughs>